Good morning, everybody. And as usual, happy Saturday. I am Coach Ray. Thank you for joining me for today's Safe Mobility class. So for today's class, I didn't mention last week, I wanted to go over deadlifts and I wanted to keep this deadlift or hip hinge specific. So we're only gonna go over a conventional deadlift and then we're gonna go over a RDL uh, or a, no, more of RDL. Because RDL and the stiff leg are actually a little bit different. So for today's class, you are gonna need access to a barbell, right? You're gonna need access to a barbell and some weights. How much weight you do is gonna depend on you. We're not looking to go heavy. It's more so to talk about the specificity behind the techniques of deadlifts to ensure that you get more out of your deadlifts with lowering the risk of injury. So a lot of the stuff we're actually gonna be doing today is gonna to be things that I would actually teach somebody if they wanna learn how to deadlift and things that they can do to incorporate getting their deadlift a little bit more efficient and better. So what we're gonna be doing first is we're gonna go through our full body warm up, mostly specific on feet, uh, hips, and spine. And then we're gonna go over some core stabilization drills and some things that we can do to actually get the core a little bit more active. And then we're gonna go over some of the technical cues for the deadlift. So however much weight you got or wanna go with, that's what we're gonna work with. We're gonna work with light sets, five to eight, just to kind of work on the technical aspects. And I'll kind of show it from a couple of different angles so you can see how my back looks, how my hips are set up, so on and so forth. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna need access to two long sticks and one short stick, by the way. So if you have access to all three sticks, please make sure you have them. So we're gonna start off with the short stick first. We're gonna start off with warming up the feet. And so this one we're gonna go through a little quick and I'm gonna have a stance wider than shoulder width here. And I want my toes to be pointed forward. I'm gonna have the bottom of the stick angled in towards me, lined up with my center line, both hands on the stick, roughly about chest height. And all I wanna do from here is get into a nice good horse stance, make sure my pelvis is stacked under my spine. And then I'm gonna bring both heels up nice and high, keeping all five toes in contact with the floor. And then I'm gonna bring my heels down and I wanna hover my heels and then bring them back up. Nice and easy, back down. Good, up. Now, nice and controlled, up, down. Let's go two more here, up. Down, excellent, let's go one more time. Up, and down. Good, and ease off. Stay in that stance, we're gonna go with a pelvic tilt here. So the stick angle is gonna be the same. Now we're gonna drive the stick down 30%. Drive the stick down, keep those shoulders down. Now we're gonna do a posterior tilt. So I'm gonna tuck my pelvis, squeezing my glutes, as if I'm trying to tip water out the back. So if my, butt, if my hips are a bucket, tipping them this way. Now we're gonna go anterior tilt, tilt the opposite way. You should be feeling those lower back tissues tighten here. Posterior tilt, squeeze the glutes, drive those knees apart. Excellent, anterior tilt. Posterior tilt. Good, anterior tilt. And posterior tilt, hold here. Now we're gonna do lateral hip bumps. So I'm gonna bump my right hip up, good, and then left hip up. So that right hip should drop as you bump the left hip up. Right hip, left hip. Left glute should be firing. Right hip, good, left hip, right hip. And left hip. Back to center and ease off. Excellent. We're gonna place the short stick down. We're gonna grab our two long sticks here. So since we are working with deadlifts, we need to put a lot of emphasis on warming up those glutes and those external rotators of the hip. So we're gonna go with hip abduction first and we're gonna go with a standard version. So I'm gonna go with my feet together Toes are pointed forward. I want the bottom of the sticks in line with midfoot here. 
Notice the angle of the sticks. We will move them out progressively as we go along here. Hands are at roughly about shoulder height. I'm gonna drive both sticks down. I'm going to about 30% here. And I'm gonna hover that left foot and I'm gonna bring it to the left stick. And I wanna push with the mid part of my foot, driving my foot against the stick at 30%. We're gonna hold for about 10 seconds here. Breathe, keep driving the sticks down. Excellent, we're gonna ease off. Nice and easy, set that foot down. Move the stick out a couple of inches. Drive both sticks down again, hover that left foot, bring it to the left stick, and push. Drive that foot against the stick. Notice my toes are pointed forward, not out. Good, ease off, nice and easy. Good, move the stick out a couple of more inches. Drive both sticks down, hover that left foot, bring the foot out to the stick and push 30%. Now from this position, I want you to externally rotate the hip. So I'm gonna rotate my hip out, driving my foot back against the stick, and then I'm gonna rotate that hip back forward. Let's go two more, rotate out. Good, back forward, and rotate out again. Back forward, and, and ease off. Gonna move that left stick back in. Now we're gonna switch over to the right side. So drive both sticks down 30%. Hover that right foot, bring it to the right stick and push. Keep those toes pointed forward. We're only at 30% here. Not going too hard. Three, two, one, back in. Ease off, move the stick out a couple of inches. Let's go again, drop both sticks down. Hover that right foot, push against the stick. Breathe. You should stay balanced here. Good, three, two, one. Excellent, back in, ease off. Move that stick out a couple more inches. Drive both sticks down, so 30%, hover the right foot. Bring it to the right stick, push. Now this is where we externally rotate. So I'm gonna rotate that hip out, back forward, and wanna rotate at the hip joint. Rotate out, back forward, one more time. Rotate out, back forward, excellent, in, and ease off. Excellent, good. And now we're gonna get into Captain Morgan's. So with these, we're gonna be in hip flexion and abducting. So this is gonna be pretty beneficial because you gotta think of the position we're gonna be in for deadlifts. We're in a starting position. We're in a position where hips are flexed. So it's gonna be good to actually be able to get the glutes to be active as we go into that hip flex position. And so I'm actually gonna kinda of turn to the side here. Start my feet together. I'm going to start with my right hip first. So my, the left stick is going to be at 12. The right stick is going to be at roughly about one or two. This is going to depend on your mobility. You can always adjust the stick as we go along here. So I'm going to start left, uh, left stick at 12, right stick at roughly about somewhere between one and two. And I'm going to have both arms straight. I'm going to drive both sticks down. Now you should be feeling the core turn on. You should be feeling those obliques activate. Now from this position, I'm gonna bring my right hip up. All right, we're driving those sticks down about 30%. And I'm gonna bring that right foot out and I wanna drive my knee back as I push back against the stick. So then I wanna keep my knee stacked over my foot best I can. Notice that my knee is actually slightly behind the stick. That's okay. I'm gonna ease off, bring it forward and then back down, ease off. Let's go again, let's go two more. Drive both sticks down, right knee up, bring it out to the stick, push the foot against the stick. <sighs> Try to keep that right knee externally rotated. <sighs> Three, two, one, back forward, and down. <sighs> ease off, 
We're gonna go one more time. Drop both sticks down. Right knee up. Bring it out to the stick. Push. Back. Hmm. Sorry about that. I do not know why it lost connection. Let's continue on. So now we're gonna do that same thing. Right stick's at 12, left stick's gonna be roughly about 10 or 11 o'clock. Drop both sticks down. Left knee up, bring out, push, drive. Three, two, one. Back forward and down. Let's go two more here, folks. Drop both sticks down, up, bring out, push against the stick. Three, two, one, back forward, down. Excellent, one more time, folks. Drop down, knee up, bring out, push. Three, two, one, back forward, and down. Excellent. Now we're just gonna go through stretching out that T-spine just a little bit. And so what we're gonna do is kind of a cat camel because we wanna make sure that we can actually floss back and forth and establish a little bit of control, but we're just also getting a lot of signals going to the spine here, right? So we wanna be able to have some of that kinesthetic awareness or being aware of where our body is in space. So I'm gonna have a roughly hip to shoulder width stance here. I'm gonna want my toes pointed forward. And from this position, I'm gonna have my hands roughly about shoulder height. I'm gonna lightly, very lightly, drive the sticks down roughly about 10%, 10 to 20. And I'm going to hinge back. Driving my hands out, you're gonna feel a nice stretch in that T-spine, that upper back. Now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to flex my spine. So I'm gonna drive my thoracic spine up towards the ceiling, like I'm trying to create a cat back, and then extend back out. I'm trying to get as much of a stretch as I can. I'm going to flex the spine, extend, Good, let's go one more time, flex, and extend, good, back up, and ease off. Now, we're going to go to the floor, we're going to do two different core drills. One's going to be effectively loaded, the other one is going to be more to stabilize. So we're gonna start off first with the dead buck. After the dead buck, we're gonna get into the bird dog. The bird dog is mainly there, again, for coordination. We need to create good core stiffness. However, it's gonna be in a position where we're actually, again, moving. So that one's gonna be a little bit more loaded. So I'm gonna take the short stick. I'm gonna to go to the floor here. Now, for this, we're very familiar with the dead bug, right? I'm gonna have the stick over my hips here. I don't need to bring it up any higher. I don't need to. Bring, I don't want to bring this any lower. I want it just right about where my hips are. Hands are out wide, and I'm gonna have both legs in contact with the stick. Now, from this position, I'm going to drive my hands down and drive my knees up, creating compressive force at 30%. We just want to make sure that the core is nice and active. Low back is flat to the floor. Three, two, one. Excellent, ease off. Good. We're gonna go again, we're gonna get two more sets here. We're gonna go for about 10 second holds, 10 to 12 seconds. So get the stick over the hips, knees up, create that compressive force, 30%. Breathe. Three, two, one, excellent, ease off. We're gonna go one more time. Knees up, create compressive force. Force, sorry. 
a little bit of a lift there. Breathe. Three, two, one. Excellent. He's off. Good. We're going to place the short stick down, actually. And something I want you guys to pay attention to. So this is going to talk a little bit about diaphragmatic breathing. What that means is when you breathe in, when you brace your core, you're not breathing in up here. Right? So a lot of people, when they breathe in, that's not how you're going to properly brace the core. How you probably brace your core is breathing in 360 degrees into here. So we're going to do something real quick before we get into the bird dog. This is called a sandwich drill. You're going to take your two hands. You're going to place it right around your midsection here. All right? Now, from this position, I'm going to tighten my core a bit. Now, in order to actually figure out how you're breathing properly, I want my hands to expand outwards, 360 degrees, uh, sorry, drawing in air to make sure that the core tightens. So, keeping your, your core nice and tight here. From here, going to breathe in. Good. Breathe in. Let's go again. Breathe in. One more time. Breathe in. As you do that, your hand should be moving outwards. It's going to feel the same way a weightlifting belt would. That's, a, that's effectively what a weightlifting belt does. It gives you external feedback of knowing where to breathe in. So if you're breathing in properly, you're gonna feel that rib cage expand, you're gonna feel that diaphragm expand and really press against that belt. That's what creates a lot of that pressure. So that's how you know you're breathing right. Now we're gonna get into the bird dog real quick. So we're gonna go to the floor. We're gonna be in a quadruped position. And again, this is just to get some coordination here. Now my hands are directly under my shoulders, knees are under my hips, and you wanna find that position of neutral. If you're in this position, you're gonna miss that connection. So try to find that neutral position with your pelvis, try to keep it flat. Now once you got that, we're gonna exhale, draw your belly button in towards the spine best you can. So exhale. Keep that tightness that you feel in the lower abdomen. I'm going to bring my left leg and right arm off the floor, and I'm going to extend out, hold, back in. I'm gonna to touch my fist to my knee, and then extend back out again. Bring it in, touch the knee, and then back out. Bring my hands back down. Now we're gonna switch sides. So, find that position of neutral. Draw the belly button into the spine as hard as you can. Hover the left, uh, left arm, right knee, extend. Bring them into touch. Extend. Bring in the touch and extend. Excellent, back down, and ease off. Excellent, all right. Now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. So, there's gonna be a few different cues that I really want you to focus on here. When it comes to the upper body, first cue, shoulder blades or shoulders, always in your back pocket. Right? So if I'm here standing straight up, I want to push my shoulders down towards my back pocket. What that does is it packs those lats, it gets those lats nice and active. However, it also keeps that bar close to you. You want that bar as close to your center of gravity as possible. The further it drifts away, the more forces you have to overcome, which is not going to be ideal for deadlifting. So that's number one. Number two, Core engagement, right? We went over the sandwich drill. 
you want to get that same core tightness and expansion, right? That's number two. Third one, push your feet into the floor as hard as you can. This is not you picking something up. This is you driving your feet into the floor, creating that force to a standing position, and then going back down. So I'm gonna pull the bar up, and I'm actually going to show how, how it's set up. And I want you guys to follow along here. And we're gonna start this from the top. So I'm gonna turn to the side here, and I have the barbell, so foot stance, that's the other thing. Your stance is gonna depend on you. Some people like to go wider, some people like to go more narrow. Your toe angle can be slightly out or toes forward. Whatever is the most comfortable position for you to be in, that's the position I want you to be in. Whatever allows, whatever your anatomy allows. Also understand that your deadlift is not gonna look like mine. Your, perform, your proportions or your anatomical structure is gonna be different than mine based on my limb length compared to my torso length. So that's something to also kind of keep in mind here, right? Every deadlift's gonna look a little different. Now for me, I'm gonna set up for my typical deadlift. For me, I go very slightly wider than uh, hip width. Slight toe out angle. Feet are nice and active, so I'm, I'm driving my toes into the floor here. Make sure I got good ground activation. Now from here, from this tall position, I'm gonna drive my shoulders down towards my hips. They stay that direction the entire time. The first part of this movement is me driving my hips back. So I'm hinging, right? This is that first move. I'm gonna drive my hips back. The bar is going down my quads. Once I get to right below my knee, or my patella, to be more specific, I'm going to squat down a bit. All right, now this is my starting position for my deadlift. So when I go to initiate, I'm driving my feet into the floor, squeezing my glutes at the top, right? Not extending, just getting to a nice good tall position. And we're gonna hinge back, all the way down to right below the knee, squat down from this position, drive those feet into the floor, squeeze those glutes, and that's the initial part of that movement. Right? So I'm going to turn to the side here. And again, not going heavy. Just want to focus on the technical aspects. So let's go ahead and load up your barbell. We're going to start here at 135. Now, again, we're going to go over three cues. Number one, shoulders to the hips. Number two, core engagement. Number three, drive those feet into the floor and stand up, right? You're pushing yourself away from the floor. That's the objective here. Now, I'm actually gonna turn this to the side. It's still warming up. I'm gonna turn this to the side. Hopefully this barbell stops moving. Barbell should be over midfoot, right? If, the, if you're standing up straight and the barbell's touching your shins, it's a little too close, folks. Create a little bit of space. If you're standing straight up, the bar should be about roughly one to maybe about one and a half or two inches away from your shin. So from this position here, the barbell is set up. It's in a stable position. Try not to have the barbell move too much. From here, I'm gonna go down and I'm going to grab the bar. So notice I actually hinged to go down and grab the bar. Once I have the bar in, in my hands here, again, I'm going to pull my shoulders down towards my hips. So lats get nice and active. And I'm gonna tighten my core, breathe in, bring my hips down a bit and drive my feet to the floor, squeeze the glutes to a tall position. And then I'm gonna hinge back, going all the way down. It's one. Do it again, drive your feet to the floor. That's two, hinge, up, three, up, four, up, five. And 
then back down. Now, I'm gonna add on a little bit more weight. Your technique's gonna look a little bit different with weight, which is why I want you to add a bit of weight to the bar. What we're looking for is, for one, to create a little bit of structural challenge. So if the weight's too light, you're not gonna get that much of a challenge. Um, but you wanna focus on those specific technical cues if they're hard to grasp. Take your time with each rep. If you need to reset every rep, I prefer you to do that than rush it. So from here, go in a little more weight if you'd like, or stick to the same weight. And we're gonna do this in sets of five. Because I want your focus to be only mainly on the technique. The weight should not be too challenging. Remember, this is just kind of a class focusing on the specific cues for deadlifts. Hold on. Always have collars if you got them. Just to make sure the weight stays on. All right. So walk up to the bar. All right, make sure bar's over midfoot. Now from here, we're gonna hinge back. So hinge, go down, grab the bar. If you wanna go with the double overhand, then do so. Grab the bar here. Drive my toe, drive your toes into the floor. I'm gonna pull my shoulders down towards my hips, core tight. And then drive my feet into the floor. Good, squeeze those glutes. Back down, again, two, hinge, three, four, one more time, five, down, take a break. So, you should not be feeling your lower back get active. If you're feeling your low back, you need to rework that technique. I really, really, really want you to focus on keeping your core braced and tight as you go through the entire movement. That doesn't go away. So, that's a, so that sometimes begins to be a little bit of part of the problem is that as people start to go into exercises, they kind of forget some of the cues or they kind of get a little lazy with them. You don't ever want to get lazy with them. You always remember those cues. Those cues are what keep you able to do those exercises for longer periods of time. I mean, over the course of years, <laughs> not in one session. All right, so let's go ahead and go into it again. Let's go two more sets of five here, folks. So we're gonna get set up, figure out your foot angle. You can all play around with your stance, however much that you need to. Drive those toes into the floor. Feet should be nice and active. I'm gonna hinge back. I'm gonna go down, grab the bar. So same thing, shoulders down towards the hips, core tight. Breathe in and drive those feet into the floor. One. Two, three, four, five. Take a break, ease off. I'm gonna go one more set. Another thing that's also asked sometimes is where should your eyesight be? For me, I do not like going look, looking straight up. And you'll see that sometimes, everybody's a little different. But if you were to look at somebody from the side, ideally what you wanna see is if they were standing just like this, right? You don't wanna see this. That puts a lot of excessive stress on the cervical spine, which does translate going down to the thoracic and the lumbar. So think about your chin being kind of packed just a little bit you'll get more engagement in that upper back and a lot more tension. 
So we're gonna go one more set of the conventional. We're gonna strip off some of the weight and we're gonna go over RDLs. So get set up with your foot position. Bars over mid foot, hinge back. All right. And you also notice that I'm kind of creating a little bit of torque. So I'm also like slightly rotating my feet into the floor. So that gets a little bit of torque on the hips. You can also get those glutes active, but we're not trying to specifically focus on that technique here. Now from here, grab the bar. So shoulders down to the hips, core tight, pull down, up, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, one more time, up, five. Excellent. Good. That's the end of the conventional. Now we're going to shift over to RDL, which is just going to be another variation, focusing specifically on hamstrings, not so much glutes. You're going to get your glutes a little active, but how we're going to do this is going to be more so hamstring specific. We're going to make it more hamstring dominant by actually really, really working on keeping your hips as high as you possibly can. So you'll see sometimes when people do RDLs, you'll see a lot of knee bend and hips go back here. This gets a little bit more of the glutes. What I want is more of a position like this. Even simply getting into that position, you'll feel your hamstrings quickly turn on, or at least you'll get that stretch in the hamstring, which is what we're going for. So let's take off some of the weight. Keep it much lighter. And again, something I want you to realize, cues are basically about the same. The only difference is you're not necessarily driving your feet to the floor. For this, you're really trying to pull through the hamstrings in order to engage that movement. Right? So there is a bit of a difference because we're not meant to get quad drive with an RDL. This is meant to be very, very hamstring focused. So I'm going to turn this to the side, right about here. Your setup also, your setup or where the bar is, is also going to be slightly different. What that means is it's going to be a little closer to your shins because you want that bar to be as close to your shins as possible. Now it can start this from the floor or it can start this from, from the lockout position. We're actually gonna start this off from the floor. Now, I'm gonna pull the bar back. I'm gonna make sure that I have the bar very, very close to my shins. What this, and make sure the barbell doesn't move. This also prevents you from getting a lot of forward knee travel. So you do want the barbell to be really, really close to the shins here, or basically touching. Now from this position here, hinge. I need to hinge back, right? So I'm gonna hinge back, and I'm gonna keep my knees basically very, very softly bent. I wanna to try to keep it that way the entire time. If you don't have the access to this range of motion, you can actually set it up on a box That'll make it a little bit easier for you to get into position, or you can simply start from the top position, or if you go with kettlebells, has a uh, alternative to a barbell. So from here, I'm driving my toes into the floor, that is still there, and I'm going to go down, I'm gonna receive the bar, and I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades, shoulders down towards my hips, and from there, core tight, I'm going to try to pull through my hamstrings to that top position, squeeze those glutes, and I'm gonna drive my hips back, keeping my knees soft, go until I get a nice good stretch, and then back up, it's two. Core tight, up, three, hinge, up, 
four. One more time. Up. Five. Good. I'm going to set it back down the same way I would for a conventional deadlifts. We're going to get to one more set. Again, the hips staying higher is really what engages those hamstrings more or shifts a lot of that tension to the hamstrings. So if you're doing RDLs, again, your low back's getting active, focus on bracing your core, change that range of motion, even change the equipment that you're using. But if you find that you're actually not getting as much hamstring engagement, that means that your knees are not, are bending too much, typically, is what that is. You're, you're going in a knee flexion as opposed to trying to keep more knee extension, which shifts it more to the hamstrings. So we're gonna do it again, this time, Let's actually have you start from the top. I'm gonna have you pick up the barbell the same way you would for a deadlift, for a regular conventional deadlift. So get set up in position, go down to a hinge, grab a bar, shoulders down, core tight, drive your feet to the floor, to that top position. Now we go into our RDL. So shoulders are still down, dropping the toes to the floor, Hinge those hips back, slight bend to the knees. Then up, one, hinge, grab those hips back, 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 back. Up, it's two, it's back. Three, two more. Four, one more time, back, core tight, and up, five, and set down, and ease off. Excellent, good. Now, let's go in and get into a little bit of stretching. Let's cool your body down a little bit. So, since we did a lot of hamstring and hinge work, guess what we're going to be focusing on? those hammies. So for this, we're going to need one long stick. Ideally, I will go with a pro model, but we're just going to stick with the regular. We're going to go to a seated straddle stretch. We're going to use this to get into those hamstrings as well as the adductors. So we're going to go to the floor here. I'm going to bring my feet out wide. Now, as usual for this, it's gonna depend on your mobility. So I'm gonna have, take the stick, and I'm gonna place it right where the arches of my foot are. And I'm gonna wiggle my feet out a little bit. Get a little wider. So to make this a little bit more effective, try to drive, so try to extend your knee or effectively flex your quads. From there, I'm gonna hold double overhand grip, and I'm going to pull back. So I get some tension on the stick. However, I'm getting a nice good stretch in the adductors and maybe even a little bit on the hamstring depending on how tight you are. Breathe. Excellent, we're gonna ease off. I'm gonna rotate the stick a bit. I'm gonna grip underhand. This is where we get into those hamstrings a little bit more. So from here, I'm gonna pull upright. Now, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna almost basically kind of curl myself, curl my torso going down towards the stick. And I'm gonna get an even bigger stretch in the adductors and the hamstrings. Breathe. Three, two, one. I'm gonna ease off. Excellent. Take a second. I'm gonna rotate the stick again. Now this is where we're gonna walk our hands over to one side and then the other. So we're gonna go with a double overhand grip and I'm gonna create tension, so pull back. Now I'm gonna take my right hand Place it over my left, 
then my left outside my right, and then right hand over again. So I'm gonna get a stretch in that QL, and this left hamstring adductor, really gonna light up, get a nice good stretch here. Excellent, I'm gonna walk my hands back over. Then I'm gonna walk over to the other side. Make sure as you walk your hands over to your right, your left hand is being over your right hand. Three, two, one. Excellent, walk your hands back over and ease off. Wonderful. We're gonna go to a standing position. We're gonna get a little bit of a hang here. We're just gonna use the kind of lightly decompress the spine. We're gonna go with a double monkey hang. We're gonna keep our weight at about 50% between our hands and our legs just so it's not all super grip intensive. The grip might be slightly higher from the deadlifts. So right foot is forward, left foot is back. So let me back up a little bit. Just roll hands are up high. And I'm going to slowly lower down. Mid back should be feeling pretty good. Upper back should be feeling good. Excellent, we're gonna ease off. Then we're gonna switch feet. So left foot forward, right foot back. And then slowly drop down. Excellent. Slowly come up, switch those feet again. Drop down, rotate, light rotations at the shoulder. Good, up and switch feet again. Drop down, good, rotate side to side. Minor rotations here, folks. Nothing too significant. Back up. Excellent. Now, I'm gonna place one stick down. And we're gonna to go with the hamstring stretch here. Hamstring specific stretch. So I'm gonna have both feet together. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my left foot uh, forward, it's my heel forward. So right foot is still back, left heel is right just about at the line of the toes on my left foot, dorsiflexed ankle. And I wanna keep it that way. So slight bend to this left knee, very slight. Now from here, I'm gonna have the bottom of the stick angled out in front, and I'm gonna have both hands on the stick like so on my right shoulder. So stick should be on the opposite shoulder of the leg that's actually getting stretched. And now from here, I'm gonna slowly Work my way going down towards the bottom of the stick, driving my hips back. It's really important. Make sure we get that full stretch on that hamstring here. Now I'm gonna lightly drive my left heel down into the floor. I'm just gonna hold that position. We're just adding a little bit of activation here, folks. Excellent, I'm gonna slowly walk myself back up and we're gonna switch sides. So now sticks on the left shoulder, right heel is forward, dorsiflex that ankle, slight bend to that right knee, bottom of the stick is angled forward, both hands on the stick, and I'm gonna light, I'm gonna drive my hips back, guiding myself down towards the bottom of the stick here. Now lightly drive that heel into the foot, or sorry, foot into the ground. <laughs> Breathe, three, two, one. Walk yourself back up, nice and easy. 
Excellent. And he's off. And that concludes today's stick mobility class. Thank you for joining everybody. Just wanted to kind of go over deadlifts, get to work with barbells. It's super fun this month. So next week, next week, ne next week's class, we are going to be doing some landmine drills. So it's going to be pretty fun, pretty explosive. If you have a landmine uh, type of device or something that's highly secure that you can actually put the barbell into in terms of a corner of a wall or something, this is going to be a really, really fun class for you next week. We're going to go over some of the basics and some of the things that we can actually incorporate into some explosive work. All right, folks. So hope everybody had a good class. As usual, have a safe weekend and I will catch y'all next time. Have a good one.